Welcome to Digital Asset News. I get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite sized pieces. Today, another interesting day to say the least. First up, banks are now asking if Bitcoin can help them stay relevant. And this is the same thing that we've been predicting on this channel for quite some time. The banks are starting to FOMO in because of all the different things that are happening in cryptocurrency and digital assets. And it really comes down to these three ladies. Also, we still don't have a president. And uh, if anything is a marker, history shows presidential elections often mark a turning point for Bitcoin. And if you're into Bitcoin, which I think you are, you're gonna really like this article. Also, Alex Mashinsky has stolen the title from Charles Hoskinson as the CEO with the most amount of confidence ever in his project. And I'm gonna show you why, but in all actuality, He's got a good reason to be. And finally, we'll round it all out with Q of the Day, where Medic asked a pretty good question about the disappearing ink that we can use on the Shield Folio or Stone Book and how long it actually lasts. So we're getting all that, but first take a look at what's going on in the market. So a uh, little turbulence, a little uncertainty. I can only imagine why. Uh, it is Wednesday, November 4th, about 4 p.m. Texas time, and a lot of things are going on. And the big thing for me, uh, maybe for you too, is uh, Bitcoin is at 14,000. So congratulations. Uh, if you were holding this whole time, uh, you did it. Uh, you're at 14K and not too long ago. I remember when it was uh, just March, uh, not too long ago, it was below 4,000. So if you bought down then, congratulations, because you've got ice in your veins and you're reaping the rewards. Bitcoin is up 2.5% for 24 hours and 2.6 for the week. So not too shabby. Ethereum busts through the 400 mark. And I can tell you, I think... I can only assume actually I can I can assume that Ethereum will keep above this level but it seems to be a very uh, precarious situation that Ethereum is in and it seems to kind of like bounce around but uh, with the uh, newest addition to uh, PayPal as they uh, roll out Bitcoin Bitcoin Cash Ethereum and Litecoin uh, this could uh, be a catalyst but uh, again who knows I'd like to see a stay above 400 but every time I say it it goes back down so I think I'm jinxing it Tether is uh, sitting around almost 17 billion market caps, so not too bad. Uh, XRP keeps steady, I suppose, around 23 cents. Bitcoin Cash is down, uh, weird. Chainlink is up uh, almost 2%, so it's almost $11. But um, I was hoping it would be on the move, but it's down 12% for the week, so that is never good news. Binance Coin also down, but she's 16% for the week. Uh, that's a big hit. Polkadot, still around four bucks, not too bad. Litecoin's up, great. Cardano, uh, up 2.8%, but again, it's still around that 10 cent mark. It really doesn't really go too far up or too far below, but uh, we will see. I mean, it's got a lot of great things happening. I mean, just yesterday they talked about how on their network, all the different stake pools now have more than uh, IOG. So that's good. It means it's more, or it is decentralized now because it's over 50%. As of Friday, it's gonna be 49.51. And on top of that, they have that uh, fantastic ERC20 uh, converter, which uh, if you are if you have any kind of project or any kind of coin that's uh, ERC20, you can just transfer it over right to the Cardano network. So that to me is huge, but uh, we'll see how it all works out. USD coins, stable coin, no one cares. And let's see what else. Wrap, yeah, wrap Bitcoin, same thing. Tezos, 1.4, great. Uh, OKB, yeah, sure. And then uh, anything big down here? Of course it's big. It's Celsius network. Up 14.5%. Man, I got to tell you, I picked, uh, I, I can pick them. So Celsius Network, not that uh, I'm kind of bummed out because I was really ramping up my uh, my, my DCA. I, I still put money in. I'm glad I put it in, you know, uh, the last week every day. So I'm pretty happy about that, but kind of open to accumulate a little bit more. But uh, hey, here we are. But it's up 14.5 and 22 for the week. So uh, if you're holding Celsius, which I know a lot of you are, congratulations. And I can only tell you, I'm thinking it's going to go much higher and I'm going to explain why in a little bit. But let's break into today's top story. So first up, if banks aren't completely 100% FOMOing in, uh, they're getting ready to because they're asking questions uh, on a whole nother level, which two or three years ago would have seemed ridiculous. Uh, but here we are. It's amazing how fast cryptocurrency moves. We've got the old style bankers in their old world asking people who are in this space going, hey, how do we stay relevant? Swear, that's what they're saying. Can we stay relevant in this in this day and age? And, uh, it's, and that question is being asked uh, by Avanti. It's also being asked by Kraken, the bank that uh, both of those are, are now special depositories in Wyoming. And it's only going to get worse for them. So, And even if those CBDCs come into play and we have the central banks who are just issuing uh, you know, our, the CBDCs directly to the consumers or to the citizens, uh, there is no, no real reason 
uh, for a commercial bank other than just to be a, a node uh, because you're not going to be uh, hanging around and giving out money. That's not your, your main purpose anymore. So I'm not going to get ahead of myself. So this was pretty interesting and just kind of what I thought was going on. So a pair of investment strategists say banks are now taking a closer look at whether Bitcoin can help them stay relevant. In a new interview on the Unchained podcast, CoinShares chief strategy officer Meltem Demirs says she's now fielding crypto questions from banking execs on a regular basis. So it was uh, hosted by Laura Shin. She is a pretty great journalist. I always recommend checking out her channel. Got a lot of great guests. Uh, Meltem here, uh, Demirs, hope I said her name right. So, uh, Chief Strategy Officer of CoinShares, then Lynn Alden. She's the founder of uh, Investment Strategy at Lynn Alden Group. So they've got a couple of great stories and it's uh, it's about an hour and a half long if you want to listen to it sure that's great but i'm just gonna give you the highlights so to quote uh melton mirror she states we've been talking to banks and asset managers who are asking what do we do is bitcoin maybe part of the answer to how we stay relevant how do we keep aum or asset center management and actually deliver a product that our clients will pay for and she's like, it's not rocket science. Just give them what they want. I mean, just don't be stupid. Just say, yes, we will uh, do cryptocurrency digital assets. I mean, I think that's that's one of the problems with uh, a lot of uh, industries or businesses out there or even YouTube channels, I'll be honest with you, because people always think, oh, I know what they want. You don't know what people want. You just got to ask them. That's why, like, I mean, j just for example, in, in this channel, I'm always pretty active in the comment section. So when people say, Hey, Rob, that was stupid. I don't do those things again. I mean, if I don't, if it's just one person, I'm like, well, maybe. But if I keep hearing again and again and again, then I stop doing that because that's not what people want. So it's the same thing with the banks right now. Just all they have to do is take a look at PayPal. When PayPal opened up everything, they said, hey, we're going to offer crypto and digital assets. Do you guys want something? Well, they had a 3x demand from their wait list. And they said, wow, this is way bigger than we thought. So instead of just having $10,000 per day, we're going to up it to 15000 And then we're going to roll it out even faster. So they have the pulse on what people want. Banks, again, are not good at innovation. So that's going to take a little bit of time. But the time that it takes for them to catch up, I think that everything's going to get passing them by and they're going to get blockbustered. Anyhow, Lynn Alden, founder of Lynn Alden Strategy, says she's having similar conversations, which is odd because, I mean, they're all talking to these banks and they're all saying the same things to them. She states, uh, for example, the other day I gave a presentation to a bank board of directors and Bitcoin wasn't one of my kind of presentation points. I was just talking about fiscal monetary policy. And, and then one of the first things they asked when I was done was, what do I think about Bitcoin? So she goes over all this, uh, you know, fiscal policy, pretty dry, pretty uh, nice and uh, individualized language for for the banks. She's like, hey, that was great. Well, what about Bitcoin? And uh, and the reason uh, or part of the reason why these banks are all ask actually asking about it is because she says right here, because they had noticed, for example, the Michael Saylor investment. And of course, that is the whole micro strategy thing. And she goes into the whole story. But I have to I, I, I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I mean, it's very simple. I mean, if you're a bank, and you're like, hmm, how can we make money? Or if you're a corporation, how can we make more money? Well, it's pretty simple. Just take a look at what Michael Saylor did with micro strategy. And uh, they plumped down 425 million about a couple months ago, and now it's worth 537 million. So uh, again, not rocket science. So if you put money into an asset that is climbing up and has a tremendous upside, as opposed to any type of stock or bond or or any kind of uh, gold or precious metals right now, I don't see I don't see gold or silver going up 10x in the next year or so. But I do see Bitcoin doing that. Uh, this is an asymmetrical investment. And of course, banks are gonna look at that and go, wow, people want this. Uh, we can offer it to them. And also it's the price is going through the roof uh, because it is so valuable. I mean, it's again, not brain surgery. And to finish up, she says, uh, so the board's like, so how real is this? Is this like still an asset class for the crazies? Or is it, you know, an actual thing? And that's how they phrase it still to this day. Uh, or is it an actual like, do you treat it like a commodity? Do you treat it like a currency? So she says, I gave them my five minute uh, bullish overview for Bitcoin, which is why I'm always ta talking about the uh, Bitcoin elevator pitch. Uh, check out that video. It's very simple. All you got to say is, look, Bitcoin is digital gold. Unlike gold, it is finite at 21 million, whereas with gold, you're going to keep buying that stuff. It, uh, it is the best performing asset class ever. Uh, it used to cost a uh, nickel, and now it's cost about $14,000. And it's why I'm heavily invested, not to mention the fact that I can send it to anyone, anywhere in the world, in less than 30 minutes. That's my elevator pitch. And uh, if you can just give them something like that, I mean, to your friends and family, pretty simple. I'm sure she had to go a little bit more deeper than that. But let me know what you think in the comments section. But again, um, 
I think the banks are going to be left behind. They're not very nimble. They can't pivot and move and do things that a small company can. And they're just out of they're just out of it. Uh, that's just how it is. Now, nothing wrong with the bank employees. I mean, a lot, I, I got a lot of people listen to this channel who work for the bank. It's not you. It's just the upper management is holding everything back. And I think you can agree with me. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on.